All right, uh, uh, my name is Jason Mitzner here at Home Waters Fly Shop. Um, today, I tied one of my favorite caddis patterns, just this streaking caddis. Um, extremely durable. Um, you can tie it in a variety of sizes. You know, once you start getting past 10, 14, things get uh, start getting a little tough, mainly just because the hook wants to bend when you're trying to spin that hair. But um, yeah, one of my favorite patterns, super durable. Time in green, time in orange, time in tan or brown, and uh, go have some fun. Okay, so I got a 2488 size 10 in the vise here. Um, I'm gonna start out with some 6 aught uni olive thread and bring this back. I'm gonna stop just before the hook point and I will tie in some brassy green wire. Catch that on the side. I will make sure that just rides along the top. I will wind my threads, unwind it, and so it'll just lay a little flatter. I'll bring that back about as far as I possibly can. quickly come up and just kind of clean up where the end of that wire is and, and slightly taper it. I won't spend too much time up here, but that's probably good. And bring this all the way to the back. If I turn that a little bit, it'll keep the hook point out of the way. Next, I'm going to take the ice dub caddis green. Try not to get too much of this. I, I really try to keep it really sparse. That looks good, and that's stopping right at where I tied that wire into. It gives me a gives me a good key. You know, we're going to need to leave enough room to do a wing and spin a clump of deer hair there. So next, I will take my wire, counter wrap that. So I never really count these. Um, geez, what's that? Eight, maybe? Nine, ten, but I guess I do keep them pretty close together. I'm gonna catch that right on the top. Threads a little long. And 
fold that back and get it nice and tight. I'm gonna use some old scissors and clip this. And not bad. Maybe a little bushy, but uh, no fish. Next, I have some gray, dyed gray or done deer hair. I already clipped a little bit and got all the under fur out and the big guard hairs and uh, stacked this. This will be our wing. Um, and I'm gonna go for just past the hook bend. Take that. I'll just kind of move forward a little bit and catch more and more of those hairs and uh, I'm feeling pretty secure about that so I'll let go and see maybe a little bushy but uh, we can just fish this in faster water I guess. Make sure that wing is just on top it doesn't roll around the back. Then I'll just move more of these fibers forward and kind of get the thread in front Maybe just one or two turns to clean everything up. This guy's going away. Sweet. So I'm going to bring that thread. We've got it almost in the middle of that space there. And here we will just take a little more deer hair. This will probably be about twice as much hair as I use for the wing. Um, you know, this wing specifically, I probably could have used a little less hair. Um, make sure you get it all as much as that under fur out of there as possible. It'll really help things spin. So you don't really have to worry about stacking this stuff either. Um, one thing I would say is to keep the tips forward. So as you're gonna tie it in, keep those tips forward just so they don't get confused with your wing. If you tie them back, you can end up cutting off your wing. So I'm trying to get these things to stay back so they don't get tangled up. Sometimes if these get tangled up with the clump, you're trying to spin it will not uh, spin properly so I've just got that pinched I'm gonna set that on the top and one slightly snug wrap one more I'll snug it just a bit more I'm gonna pull up and then I'm gonna let go and hopefully it I'm gonna help it spins all the way around um, you are tying on a pretty fine wire hook, so don't get too crazy on this. Um, I'm holding this with my left hand as well. Um, that's looking pretty good. Not crowd my head too bad. Um, I will take my little brassy hair packer and just compress this a little bit. Make sure you're thread is kind of back here so you don't you definitely do not want your thread at the front of this or you will cut it and also while you're packing this make sure that you support that hook so you just don't bend it um, so I've got that packed I'll just do a few more turns get that up front and I'll pull this back and just jump my thread right to the front there that's pretty good. Take the whip finisher and it's kind of hard to keep from catching a few of those hairs. I'm not too worried about it. Nice and we're done. Pretty much done. Now I'll take all this hair and get it all perpendicular to the hook shank. 
and I'm not a I usually just use my scissors to cut this head um, if you're good with the razor blade you can but it is so small you can accidentally just chop everything off um, I have a nice you know just a little pair of small curved scissors Dr. Slick scissors and once you kinda of got all that perpendicular I just take my scissors and I kinda of rest them on the eye a little bit and definitely helps to have a rotating vise and I just go around also resting my arm on the table so it doesn't move around as much the bottom of this I try to cut flat to the hook shank be mindful of your wing there's usually a few hairs mixed in there that's looking good from here I'll usually just try to finesse those out and clip them individually And sometimes you can spend more time giving this thing a haircut than you do actually tying it. There's a point you should just stop and call it good <laughs> before you cut it all off. There we go, clean up the bottom. And this is so streaking caddis, um, one of my favorite caddis fly patterns. Um, ouch. No hackle. Um, super durable, you know, dry fly ribbed with wire. I have some of these in my box for, geez, three, four years, still working, still floating. What I like to do, um, once you glue that head, I will um, drench this thing in watershed and let it dry. Um, this thing will. Just float on, float like a cork. It does ride low. You can kind of see, um, but excellent, excellent fly.